Você cola aí. Hey! Hey, you guys, can you Salve, hear Tomá. me? Salve, Tomá! Como você vai? Let me crank up the volume a little bit. Tá lá! Wow! Good to talk to you. <laughs> wow, man, we're so happy to see you. Hey, welcome to the ISS. <laughs> Thank you. Smaller than I thought. <laughs> It's actually much bigger than, than I thought when I first got here. But here you're in the cupola, it's our panoramic window. So, And you're lucky because it's a day pass. It could have been the middle of the night, but we're actually coming over Africa very soon. Wow. wow. What can you see from your window right now? <laughs> well, I'll show you, right? Please. This is our dragon, spacecraft over there, doctor station, solar arrays on both sides. And down below, nice view of Earth. Oh my God. <laughs> That's amazing. And this is the back of the station down there. Wow. Russian progress, Russian Soyuz. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. So, Tomá, I believe you're going to be on this space station for six months. How long does six months feel on a space station? I mean, thankfully, we're always busy. There's a lot of scientific experiments that we do. There's a lot of maintenance. We're going to have a couple spacewalks and actually go out and fix the solar arrays that you see in the background, uh, maybe in June, July. So as long as you're busy, it goes really fast. And, you know, it's psychological. When you reach the, the midway, the midway point, then you feel like it goes down the hill from here. Yeah. Um, and then the last months go so fast because you start thinking about, it's like when you're on a tour, I'm, I'm guessing, you start thinking about coming back home, what you're going to do, you know, taking a break, seeing your loved one, um, and then it feels good to come back home. Yeah. It's, it's like being on tour, except only if we stayed on the bus for six months and didn't play any concerts. <laughs> yeah. How do you feel about Earth when you're flying above it and people? You know, it's, it's a great question. Yeah, it's a great question. It's, um, I mean, it goes without saying from here, you don't, you don't see borders, you don't see any of that. You only see rivers, mountains, and all the, all those natural features that we're flying over Senegal right now. Um, and, and you, you tend to think that all the divisions we create are just constructions of the mind. They don't exist naturally. We just make them happen. Um, so that's, that's just one thing. And then the other one that, that really struck me, especially during my first mission, is it's, it's amazing how small and, and kind of finite and fragile the Earth is. Um, we don't get this impression when we're on the ground because everything seems so big and you cross an ocean, it's vast, uh, you go to mountains, it's unbelievably big and it seems like there's no limits to it, but, but really from space you can clearly see it's an oasis, it's a ball, it's, it's self-contained, everything we have is here there's nothing else anywhere else so you have to use your resources wisely you have to share you have to work together yeah that's a beautiful perspective that's how we feel too i'm not trying to look cool but you're supposed to wear <laughs> these when you're when you're in a cupola okay uh-huh well that you, now you look more like a rock star than <laughs> we ever did <laughs> it's like talking with bono <laughs> yeah. yeah hey Thomas, what happens if you feel depressed or anything what do you do Sometimes I like in the evenings when uh, everybody goes to bed and the station is dark, we switch the lights off. I put on my, my ear sets, I play some music, and I just float. You know, you let yourself float in the station. Um, and then when you bump against something, you slowly react, and then you float in the other direction. And that's really, really cool because you, you, you feel completely free. You're, you're freed from the constraints of your body in a way. So you focus on the music you're listening to and the feeling you create. Um, and that takes your mind away from uh, your daily grind and uh, back to your loved ones so everything you want to think about that's, in, that's on the earth waiting for you. That's incredible, man. Tom, uh, um, I, I love watching science fiction shows that, you know, based in space. I always have done ever since I was a kid, and I, I'm sure you like watching them too, but, you know, be, being a, a real-life spaceman, what is the biggest thing they get wrong in movies? What's the biggest misconception? Yeah. One of the biggest things that get wrong is when they put the spacesuits on and they go outside. So in the, the movies, it just happens like, oh, let's put a spacesuit on and go outside. <laughs> spacesuit, <laughs> open the door, boom, they're outside. Um, in reality, you can't do this. It takes hours to prepare. And so if you don't breathe oxygen, if you don't purge your body, uh, your blood of the nitrogen, um, you're going to have decompression accidents just like in scuba diving. So only that takes like one hour of breathing and trying to purge your blood 
Um, and then checking your space suit, you know, getting it to fit correctly, preparing all the tools, uh, venting your airlock, et cetera, et cetera. It takes three, four, five hours before you can go out. So, but in the movies, obviously, it doesn't work, right? That's the plot. So <laughs> yeah. those guys just put the space suit on and go out. But yeah, that's one of the one of the things that make that make me cringe. If it takes four hours to get ready, how long can you be outside walking for? Your spacesuit is actually a mini self-contained spacecraft. You have uh, oxygen, you have uh, CO2 scrubbing, CO2 that you will produce by breathing. That would poison you if you didn't scrub it. Um, you got um, electricity for for your your systems on your your radio and all the rest of it. Um, so that and you got water to keep you cool or warm. You have a you have a, your own heating system. The, based on this, it, it depends. But usually, the CO2 is limiting you, and that's going to be seven, eight-ish hours, you have a lot of oxygen. So oxygen is not going to be the problem. The problem is going to be CO2. Uh -huh. That's a long day. Um, and then as you come back in, usually you celebrate with your friends and you're happy. Hmm. Like after a gig, I guess. Yes. Yeah. And we don't play for eight hours, though. <laughs> <laughs> Thomas, have you seen any strange species out there at all? Any, any, any of our alien friends? Not no, not yet, but I, I, I keep an eye for them. Sometimes you see, you know, you see lights or you see some phenomena. It's mostly on the Earth. I've never seen anything come close. Cool. You never know. I keep looking. So, Tamar, we sent you uh, some music because right now we, we aren't able to play for anybody on Earth. So we thought we'd just play mm -hmm. for you. <laughs> it's, it's like our one-man cool. one concert. Thanks for that, guys. Higher power. Lots of questions. You guys have to tell me what's the story of the song and where does that come from and what, where does the, the alien vibe come from the album and all the rest of it. I think that we are right now you, able to imagine alien worlds as a way of saying what we think about life on Earth. It's safer to say it about aliens than it is to say it about humans. But really it's one big... True, very true. You know, allegory. And uh, the song is about trying to find the astronaut in all of us, the, the person that can do amazing things. Cool. Shall we play it? Yeah, man. Please. This is like the premiere in the oh, whole right. galaxy. The whole <laughs> galaxy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, our brother. See you on Earth, Tom. Take care. Bye, bye, bye. bye. What a dude. Bye. <laughs> hey, that was amazing, man.